Good evening all. Um, we're going to smoke this uh, Nostrano del Brenta. Um, I don't know much about these other than the these are native of Italy. And <clears throat> when I was in uh, Venice last week, um, the chat that I bought the chat that I bought them from. I'm in the middle of editing a video. It's, it's it's fairly long, so it's taking a bit of time. Whenever I've got a few minutes, I'm getting it together. But um, and I'll upload it when I can. But <clears throat> the chap that I bought this from was uh, the main tobacconist. There are some small kind of uh, sort of high street tobacconists that will sell you some do some pipe tobacco, but mainly they're all um, tobacconists that sell mainly cigarettes and roll up tobacco. And some of them have got cigars, some of them have got some uh, pipe tobacco, and some have got both. But this guy um, didn't have any pipe stuff, but he he's the, probably got the largest selection of Havana cigars. And he's got some non-Cubans as well, so he's got a pretty, pretty good selection all around. Um, and he um, gave me the whole story behind this. I recorded it, or at least I thought I'd recorded it on my video to include it on the video when I put it together. But for some reason I seem to have lost it. Um, which is a shame because it was quite nice um, the little story that he gave but bottom line was um, that somebody one of the historic uh, growers of tobacco brought over some seed from um, Cuba um, and obviously Cuban seed you've got Cuban seed in, in Nicaragua and, and uh, um, you know these and Honduras and these other non-Cuban places that grow tobacco but um, obviously each environment in which they grow in gives its own flavor to the tobacco um, and Cuba is unique given its type of soil and its um, weather conditions and everything that goes with it produces Cuban cigar tobacco um, this he, what he said to me was is that this is somewhere kind of somewhere in between um, the Cuban it's you've got Cuban seed but in terms of the soil and the atmosphere and the weather conditions um, it's somewhere in between Cuba and the other traditional non-Cuban um, producers. So we'll see what this is about. I'm just curious. I bought a few of them because he said that they were good. Um, and we'll just see. They're quite rustic to look at. As soon as you can get them out of the box, that is. really rustic and the labels are interesting they seem to be upside down they've got them on the foot rather than on the cap it's already cut at both ends so it's kind of a torpedo shape ish but it's kind of a bit wonky and all over the place but I suppose that's the charm of these cigars they're, they're cheap they're relatively cheap so you're not going to get any major investment in the aesthetics of it and it's all about the tobacco quite a firm draw flavor is on the dry draw is not terrible um, yeah, on the, on, it's, it's a bit cedary which is interesting because they're not in cedar at all <coughs> a little bit fruity, a little bit, I'm trying to put my finger on it, perhaps a little bit aniseedy. Alright, well, we'll let this settle in and we'll see how we go. Well, <clears throat> we're about halfway into the first third and um, the draw's okay. It's a, it's a little bit snug, but it's basically okay. No real issues. Um, the flavours are quite pleasant. The flavours are 
Um, I'll break it down a little bit more, but if I had to put it into a nutshell, I would say it, it tastes like a young Cuban. Um, so a little bit, uh, you know, rough on the edges, but basically you've got nice flavours. Um, as you draw in, the flavours you get is a little bit of a fruity, licorice kind of flavour. And it finishes with a coffee. There is a bit of cinnamon in there as well, and it finishes on a, on a quite a decent coffee flavour. There's a bit of cedar in there as well. But um, it kind of comes in and out in terms of the, the fullness of the body. Um, it's quite mild at the moment, but you do sometimes get a little bit of an injection of a slightly fully, fuller uh, body of flavor in the mouth, and then it just dissipates again. Um, <clears throat> but so far, for the money, it's, it's, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of tang in there as well, which is nice and welcome. Um, I'm curious to know whether these age well and whether they improve with age. Um, I know nothing about these other than what I've already said, so um, that will have to uh, perhaps I'll get in touch with the guy who runs the shop. Um, this is um, House of Cigars in Venice. Um, and the guy who runs it is a chap called Aldo. I had, uh, over the two and a half days that I was there, um, I probably went in half a dozen times and had a few chats with him and a really nice guy. Um, he runs a cigar club there every week or every couple of weeks. Um, uh, the shame of it is, is that uh, in Italy, to have it, we, we thought here in the UK, the rules and the laws and regulations are tough. It's even tougher there. Uh, he's not allowed to send any form of tobacco in the post. <clears throat> I have no idea how they make any money there in Italy because there's no such thing as online purchasing. I mean, there are some people who do it illegally, but there's no official online purchasing of tobacco, um, at least cigars. I assume he meant all tobacco, but we were talking about cigars. Um, and I asked him whether he could, as a private person, is he able to send me a cigar in the post? He said, no, he can't, because if he, if he got caught, he would lose his license to trade. It's simple as that. And um, he said it's just not worth taking the risk. So, so even if he was sending it to me as a as a private individual, not as a shop, um, he, he couldn't take the risk, which I thought was a very very um, archaic. Really, it's it's uh, very restrictive. Anyway, um, flavors are not not bad at all. We'll see how we go further down the line. Well, we're into the. Uh, thickest part of the cigar now, um, probably about halfway into the second third, um, and the tastes have been pretty good, pretty consistent throughout. Tastes have evolved a little bit, I would say there's a little bit of, um, some, somewhere across between cinnamon, licorice and cloves. Um, it's an interesting flavour, it's quite, I wouldn't say it's floral, but it's certainly got a certain bouquet to it. Um, around the first third, coming towards the end of the first third I was trying, trying to in my mind compare the flavor profile to something Cuban and believe it or not what I compared it to was Cohiba. Cohibas have this kind of bouquet to them as well um, Cohibas are still far better than this but there is it's it's Cohiba-esque um, the flavors uh, around the first third it was interesting it had that bouquet to it, it had a bit of tang um, certainly not as refined and not as robust um, and the flavors were not as defined, but it certainly has that element of, not floral, but there is a bouquet to it. There is some interesting sweet flavors there, um, which really make it an interesting smoke. I'm, I'm generally quite impressed with it. Still got a little bit of a, a coffee finish, but that coffee finish is really mixed in with all those other flavors that I mentioned. So it's not as defined a coffee flavor. Um, it, it's. It leaves a little bit of a, a numbing effect on, on the palate. Um, it's kind of that sensation, although there's no numbing whatsoever. Um, it's just that sometimes, you know, when you eat a certain fruit, you get a little bit of a numbing on the, li on, on the mouth. It's leaving me with a little bit of a... Um, so for instance, I'm trying to describe this. It's not actual numbing. It's just the feeling of it, if you, but in a very slight way. So if when you go to the dentist and you get a shot in your... Uh, cheek or under your tooth and you go numb this is maybe a half a percent of that 
so it's it's literally nothing but it's kind of you just have that feeling um, when you're smacking your lips if you like a little bit of a dryness in the mouth um, but um, altogether a generally interesting smoke and um, behaving very well um, bone line has been fantastic throughout nice white ash stacked up quite nicely it's quite flaky it drops quite easily um, but um, generally speaking I think they were around seven or eight euro um, so it's pretty good so far so we're, we're coming to the end of the cigar now um, it's been very pleasant um, perhaps a little bit harsher in the final third um, a little bit more pepper I wasn't really getting any pepper at all in the first third probably in the second third either um, the interesting thing is that it's it's kind of morphed into a non-Cuban kind of profile it's moved over into it really tastes a bit like a Nicaraguan cigar it's peppery and um, it's got a little bit of that earthy I wouldn't say chocolate but it's got a, certainly an earthy deeper um, profile to it so <coughs> still has a bit of the coffee though it's starting to taste a little bit like a Maduro a New World Maduro cigar, which is quite interesting. A little bit of heat in the mouth as well, um, but that's I think more of it being a bit harsh now at this stage. Um, but it's um, been an interesting cigar. First time I've had uh, an Italian Puro. Um, the story, as I said, was interesting. I'm, I'm just sad that I've lost that video clip that I took. Um, but um, all in all, quite a pleasant smoke. It is a little bit harsh. It lacks a bit of re uh, a bit of refinement. Um, but other than that, it's 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 not bad for the money. Certainly, it's it's good. It's 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 not bad at all. Um, I'd like to smoke them again, perhaps in six months, see if that makes any difference. To see if if they age well. Um, as I say, I've got a few more in my humidor, and we'll see what happens with them. Thanks very much. Catch you on the next one.